Hi, and welcome to another edition of Talk in Sports. I'm Charlie DBAs. This is Steve Hart, hey. sports writers for the Staten Island Advance. This week's topic is PSEL baseball. And Steve, when we talk about PSEL baseball on Staten Island, we can't help but bring up first the Tottenville Pirates, the defending city champions. Every single year they're in the mix for the city championship and the island championship and all. Steve, they lost their ace in John McNeil last year to graduation and all, but as always, they'll have guys such as Artie Ungro and Mike Behar to, to fill in their seniors this year. They always find a way to fill in pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, Tomville baseball is like uh, death and taxes. It's uh, one of those things that uh, seems to go every year. Uh, they return uh, Matt Morales, uh, returning Advance All-Star. You always see the same names every time. Um, Ray Rudolph's kid is playing. Ray Rudolph Sr., obviously, Staten Island Sports Hall of Famer. The most obvious thing is uh, Tom Tierney Jr. and Sr. I mean, how more uh, consistent can you get with that? Uh, Mike Eisel's kid is playing on uh, Tottenville this year. I guess that's probably one of the, uh, that's always been one of the strengths of Tottenville, is that you always see, you know, always just the, the consistency of the program. You can't get a greater feeder system than from families keep sending kids to Tottenville baseball. Right. And the, I mean, do you see any, I mean, obviously every year, the, the pitching-wise, it just seems like somebody, one or two guys, always seems to pop up, and all of a sudden, bang, they have an ace, and there they are going to the playoffs again. Uh, obviously, with high school baseball, just like college, just like pros baseball, uh, pitching is always the key, whether it's uh, Behar or some of the other guys that they have coming back this year. They always see, seem to, you know, be able to produce these these arms and stuff like that. I mean, last year they got off to a little bit of a, 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 a shaky start. They had lost actually two out of three. Could have lost all three games to McKee Staten Island Tech. Uh, lost the game early to Curtis. Uh, and they came back and kind of won the division late against Curtis, taking two games late against them. And then they did what they always do, which is make a deep run into the playoffs and beat Monroe in the city championship game. And speaking of pitching, the Curtis Warriors finished 14-4 and four last year. They actually tied Tottenville for the island lead. Um, Tottenville was awarded the championship by winning two out of three games. But they returned James Gandia this year, a southpaw that was 7-0. and oh, And uh, obviously, suffice it to say that if the Warriors are going to do well, Gandia will have a say in the matter. He's crafty. He's also a pretty good hitter and all. Uh, Steve, uh, Curtis is going to do well this year. Gandia will definitely have something to say in that matter. Yeah, I mean, um, Gandia was huge for them in the playoffs. Um, it seemed like uh, he was pitching almost every game for him, if not starting, relieving. Uh, I saw him pitch a game last year in the second round at George Washington. Never an easy place to win. Uh, he goes the distance. Pitches them into the quarterfinals where they end up losing to Tottenville, but Gandhi is back. He, pitch, he pitches, he plays center field. Uh, Drew Walsh, a returning advance all star, is back at shortstop. And um, Andy Torres at uh, catcher. Uh, always uh, important to have a solid backstop. McKee Staten Island Tech also made a uh, playoff appearance last year for the second straight year. And Steve, Last year, Steve Hessian was, and he might be this year also, their leadoff hitter. They counted on him to score runs, get on base. He was an advanced all-star, did a superb job at the top of the lineup. But they're going to ask him to do something different this year. Uh, yeah, Steve Hessian's going to be their uh, number one pitcher this year, their, uh, their ace. Uh, he really wasn't uh, looked upon to do much on the mound last year. And, uh, but this year with the uh, graduations of uh, Chris Theodore and Steve Aponte, uh, he's going to be looked upon, but the good thing uh, for McKee Staten Island Tech this year is that they have a really solid core group of uh, senior kids, uh, Matt Schwartz and uh, Jared Capitelli, uh, as you said, Hessian. They have a, a, a bunch of guys who are going to be able, uh, Rob Manicero is going to be kind of coming out of the bullpen for them. He's kind of going to be their ace in the hole out of the bullpen. Vin Tortoris, their catcher. Um, a lot of good kids uh, who have had a lot of varsity experience. Um, so that's going to be a real positive for them. Uh, last year was kind of a crazy year. Uh, they start 6-0, and lose seven in a row, come back, finish 9-9, and make the playoffs, win for the second straight year as a 20th seed against a 13th seed in the first round. So they could go a little further this year. Another players to watch for this year uh, could very well be 
uh, four-year varsity player James D. Barberi from Port Richmond, as well as uh, senior shortstop Steve Vavakwa for uh, New York. Uh, anybody else, Steve, do you think could be looked at? Yeah, Joel, another, um, another kid you can kind of look at, uh, Susan Wagner has Jared Croce. Uh, nice thing here is uh, kind of the old throwback, a three-sport kid, played football, really good football. Uh, played for Jerry Kosh in basketball season, which just uh, concluded, and now playing baseball. And the big news out of uh, Petridis is a uh, new coach, T.J. Greco. Um, he's a former uh, CSI baseball player from a few years back. They still have. Uh, they they also have uh, a couple of kids who are um, who have seniors been around for a while. So we'll see what um, we'll see what happens with Petridis. Okay, and then one other thing that we should touch on is that, of course, the law was passed that uh, no more metal bats this year for the first time um, in years. It'll be uh, wood bats only, and the ball is not going to travel as far. Um, you know, pitches ERAs are probably going to be down. Uh, it, it's been ha happening since the fall when they first started using them, and Steve, do you see it as making a major impact in terms of what goes on with the season? Yeah, uh, Charles, from the uh, coaches I spoke with, um, they all say there's going to be a lot more, uh, a lot more stress put on the fundamentals of the game. Uh, bunting, bunting runners over, hit and run. Uh, expect, instead of seeing the usual 9-8 games that we've seen over the years with the aluminum bats, expect to see a lot of 3-2 games. Uh, this is ob that will obviously put a lot more emphasis on playing good defense because one botch play can kind of now make the difference. Whereas you can't really you know cover up that mistake with you know a seven run inning. Those things are probably not going to happen now this year with the aluminum bats, uh, without the aluminum bats, with the wood bats. It'll definitely be interesting to see how this season unfolds with the wood bats now in place. Well, that's it for this week for Talking Sports. I'm Charlie DBAs. This is Steve Hart. And for more results, please check the web at www.silive.com. <laughs>